so I started to, to share more of my writing. And um, prior to that, I wouldn't say I labeled myself an artist, a writer, or, or a poet, or anything uh, before that moment. I, 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 in college, I considered myself a Dharma bum because I really liked reading the beats and I would like ditch classes so I could read books in the library. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, this lecture's boring. I gotta go read in the library. I gotta read Will and S. Burroughs. This guy's in, into some crazy shit. <laughs> but, any, so, but when I got on mine, then I got like a, a feedback and I got just a small community doing groups. Like Studios 18, who who were recently doing the Pook stuff with, he was one of the first people that I've ever connected on Minds. We would um, we weren't even posting; we were just like commenting, and we were like talking and talking in the comments and about like the same kind of stuff about like psychedelics, about like science, about different authors we like. And then, and then, like at that point, it was like how much Facebook and Twitter, Twitter sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, so that we, we, and then, it was just me and him. We would just like always find each other in the comments talking. And then later, we start start talking directly, and we start coming up with these stories. And that's where I first started the paper buns. And he started this series. It's still up there on his blogs, but um, it was a. Uh, it, we at first we called it single step productions and it was supposed to be like like open source decentralized like writing group okay. the the intention was like to get them like produced like as comics or mm -hmm. or i wasn't even doing video editing at that time uh, and it was like maybe we would do like short films we didn't know we just we just wanted to do something creative yeah and so we started that group and then it's funny that like now like I've, I've turned into some weird mutant <laughs> like a, <laughs> and it's just like okay all of my I, I it was kind of funny because like uh probably a few years into mines that's when i've really started to do the infinite imaginarium that's another funny story is that that wasn't really my idea necessarily um it was this idea from these two other people at this time i was running this podcast called the, um, the minds panel show and there was this group called 24 hour imaginarium and they wanted like this like creative day on minds that like everybody would just share them being creative meditating uh, whatever it didn't really matter and we had all these different examples and i'm like oh i'll get you on the show and then we'll talk about it and we'll promote it on minds and they're like okay cool so we get on it and then it was kind of funny so we had that show and then like my final thought at the end of the show is like hey why don't we have this like every day <laughs> And then, and then later I was like, okay, we're going to start Infinite Imaginarium. And then I just went like really crazy with that idea. And I actually like stopped doing the Minds Panel show and, and I focused in on Infinite Imaginarium. And at that time, we had two different aspects. We had the emerging blockchain mm -hmm. and this like open canvas of how to like interact peer to peer on the internet in like a secure and even um, to transfer value peer to peer. Then the other side of it was like the consciousness stuff, was psychedelics, was like physics, was like dream stuff, was all of that stuff. And um, so we had two aspects and one show was supposed to be like what's happening in the emerging blockchain stuff. Okay. And then the other show was like psychedelics, uh, dreams, uh, deja vus, mm -hmm. uh, whatever on, on this side. And then it was like supposed to be like merging of those two worlds. And um, at the time, at this time, I wasn't even the host. I didn't want to be the host. I wanted the, the two people that um, had the idea make and, and um, what do you call it, at the wild card to do it and at the wild card she was doing blockchain stuff and meg was a was a visual artist and then i was just gonna help them produce it so that's when i learned how to do like audio editing oh. i started messing around with video editing because like i just wanted to get crazier with that and so i started doing that and then i took over as host but it was like all during that time like i was um 
learning and 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 growing mm -hmm. <laughs> and mutating into satiety. <laughs> and then it was kind of funny one time years later so like i'm doing infinite imaginarium i i was doing like open mic nights then i would be like at work and i remember this one time i was in the walk-in and, and my sous chef she comes into the walk-in and she's all like you know beaten by the weekend she's all like dazed and confused in the walk-in and she and then i'm in there and she's like hey you have the day off tomorrow i'm like yeah she's like what are you gonna do tomorrow and then i i tell her nothing And then she's like, oh, that's nice. But in my head, nothing meant like infinite imaginarium. He's like writing poetry. He's like going to open mic nights. It's like doing video editing. That's like my nothing. And then I'm like, oh, I was like really excited to do that. And then she's like, oh, and I forgot what she said. Something about like, this is the only thing we know how to do. And it was like this very kind of like sad, like phrase. And it like hit me. And then in my head is like, this is not the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> But I didn't say it. I just thought it in my head. And then I was like, yeah, I know. I, just like I was solid solidarity. I did that with her. But I kind of knew what she meant. Uh, but anyways, it's just kind of funny because like when I got to Minds and I fully formed Infinite Imaginarium, it was like, oh, I finally, all this useless knowledge that I had is kind of becoming useful. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I mean, for a long time, I have read all sorts of different books. Like I, I mean, back when I was like 20, I went to this like three day rave and I took like a handful of books with me <laughs> to like talk about <laughs> dance McKenna with somebody. It was, it was so funny. I was like, what? And my joke later was, I didn't know it was uh, socially unacceptable to bring Terrence McKenna books to a three day rave. Like what? I'm the weirdo because I want to talk about this stuff. <laughs> It sounds very simple uh, to me, to be saying. This is the sort of thing I would probably do. What? Right, this is nice. You're naked over there, and then I'm the weirdo for bringing a book. <laughs> uh, but yeah, oh, so, so, you know, I started mutating as Satori D, and even, even Mandala narrative, like two years ago, when, when we had the show with Bill and Bill was kind of, uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but he was really kind of like dismissive of uh, Minds Gaming's ideas or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Minds Gaming goes and, and does the Mint Me stuff. And at this time, like, I understand, like, uh, the whole thing about Mint Me. But then, like, in my head, I was like, okay, if I'm going to do that, like, I need something, in, in my terms, cool to yeah. use it with. <laughs> I'm like, what is that cool thing? And then Bill... The most interesting he said thing he said is about like starting a DAO and having the tokens go to creators and like start having like creative posts and all this kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, I want to know more about this DAO stuff. I know about it, but I like, I want I want to know more. I want to like see if I can get get into one and like see how they do their thing. Mm -hmm. Because like in my head is like, oh, Imaginarium needs to have a DAO like eventually or later. So might as well like learn it. And so I go and I, I dig around and I find this place called uh, Tokyo Engineering the Commons. And um, I start hanging out in the Discord. And then I, I go on and I work on this project called the Concealment Library. But anyways, so they, they wanted like this, you know, back in the day, like these were the libraries used to be like, you know, Library Alexander, like, you know, Alexandria you know, like these hubs of people from d disciplines, like doing research together, hanging out, talking yeah. and like, so, like, oh, I didn't think of things like that. Oh, shit. And then like you, you invent new fields. Like that's what needs to be done. Like there needs to be like this great, like a uh, merging of ideas and, and working together to like develop these new fields. And then not only develop those fields, but like start working on those fields. But anyway, so we have these great talks about that. Mm -hmm. And so I developed this, my own idea, which was called Mandala Narrative. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like a total like accident, too. I was talking to my other friend about like, oh, my God, I keep on talking to all these fucking blockchain people. And I'm just like, no, you don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about poetry. No, you, can, you can't just learn it by reading a book. No, <laughs> it's just like we're having like, I, go, I feel like going in circles. And then like, I, so I started talking to him about like other things, like uh, what I consider like team human stuff. And in those talks, I think I misunderstood what he said one time. He, he said something about like, oh, my collage is kind of like a mandala. 
I'm like, oh, you're doing mandala narrative? And he's like, oh. And so, like, in the beginning, he thought I came up with the term mandala narrative. And I thought he came up with the term mandala narrative. And so we were both talking to each other, trying to parse out, like, you know more about this. Like, tell me more about it. And I'm like, no, you know more about that. Like, tell me more about that. And so later I'm like, dude, I really like this idea. I don't know exactly what it is, but I like the two terms. I like them together. I like how I use them. I like how sometimes I use them in contrary ways. Mm -hmm. And I I was like, I just love playing with it. And then we we get, I I call it the the mandala research like phase. And so I get like really into like, like sacred texts. And so like, you know, part of my, back in the day when I was a a Dharma bum, I did Toltec dreaming, but I also read this book called the the Lost Lost Codex um, Pyramid of Fire. the Lost Aztecs Codex, anyways. Uh, so I read that, like, and it always fascinated me. And I was just like, oh my God. So basically, <laughs> there's this, okay, this uh, poet, he goes down to Mexico and kind of like, kind of similar to Will and his pearls. He, he's trying to kick his her- heroin habit and he's going to take like um, ayahuasca, is supposed to help. And, anyways, so, you know, you know all these like uh, psychedelic therapies uh, to get over addiction. So he goes and he, and he, and, he, and I think he goes to an ibogaine clinic. Anyways, he gets over his addiction and then he kind of like now what does he do? And he's like a poet. And there's nothing much back to him in the states. And he kind of like likes it there. And so he kind of like stays there. And then he works in a farm. And then um, he 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 said he wasn't even looking for it. Like the the shaman one day just like found him. And started like, hey, I'm gonna teach you like how to read these things. Like, uh, you seem interested. And then, then he said like one day they took mushrooms together, and then he's like, then we went inside the codex, <laughs> and then he wrote a short story about that adventure. And I'm like, oh my god, I kind of know what you mean. Like, okay, just like real quick, like mm-hmm. when I was in like a uh, high school, I had this deja vu dream. And ever since then, it was it was it really mundane, like, but it was very vivid and apparent to me that like I dreamt this like months before it happened, and it, and here it is happening, and I'm like, what is that? But I was in like high school, and I was like, I don't have time for this. I was like, I play baseball, and like I go to I go to go to college, but it always like stuck it to me, stuck in my head about like dreams. Anyways. So like fast forward, you know, Dharma bum, I explore it. I, I do various different things with psychedelics. And then I, I do a Toltec dreaming practice. And there's a aspect of it where you get, you can get pulled into like, uh, the best way to describe it is like the scenery anyways. And you get like pulled into a whole different like dreaming. And so when he's talking about how like he was with, with the Shabbat and then how they, they got into the codex, I'm like, oh my God, I could totally see how that could happen. Yeah. Like it's not easy, but I could see how that could be a thing because like the whole thing about like Toltec dreaming, it could kind of get a uh, boiled down to, it's not the dream that is real, it's the dreaming. So the felt experience of the given moment is what's real. And then like later it collapses and it's so hard to retrieve what what is what happens in in deep dreaming and or psychedelics because the like when i when i talk about um my experience with say the cosmic serpent Quetzalcoatl or kukulkan that i had in a dream like there was no words it was like this like wind that was like this fabric and the best way i can describe it it kind of reminds me of these patterns i see when i take mushrooms but it was different and then but you know what i mean like but there was no actual words that were communicated between that weird uh vision that that moved in weird ways but but the felt experience was like oh shit this is like this is like uh, I don't know, like experiencing like deep sea uh, creatures in, in the ocean swimming all around you in neon colors, and you're just like, 
Uh, I don't know what they're doing, but they they have uh, an intelligence of their own, and and they're doing their own thing. I know they're they're probably curious, like what are you? <laughs> and then the other thing is like, oh, get away from me, or you know whatever. And uh, I was just like, oh my god, it ha- like it, it's this thing. And then anyways, fast forward to now, when I first started using ChatGPT, I was like. Ah, fuck this thing because like I said, like what do you know? I, I my 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 phrasing is that I threw it in the deep end. I'm like, what, tell me about disembodied poetics, and he gave me like this really mid toast answer. I'm like, that's not disembodied poetics. Allen Ginsberg says disembodied poetics is the great unfolding of mind, and uh, I was like, what do you know about the 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 golden tongue? And, and then it says Allen Ginsberg is a poet. Oh, this is like says like ah, you're boring. And, it, and it, so I go and I, I say all these things. And then like later I said, oh, okay, what what is this book? And then pulls it up and like, oh, give me a quote from there. And then I there's this uh, essay by Allen Ginsberg. It's called, Everybody Should Get High for the Next 10 Years. And like, I know this essay by heart. I like, I, I could recite it. <laughs> but anyways, okay. uh, I ask it about the essay and I'm like, oh, I want a quote from the essay because I was gonna write something about my experience with ChatGPT. Mm-hmm. And then it pulls up a wrong quote. Like, oh wow! Really? And I'm like, oh, pull up, pull up another quote. And then it goes and does another quote. And I'm like, that's not the right quote. I know, I know this essay, but I, and then I go and, and and it's funny thing because that essay is not really online. It's in the book, and it, there's no good qual like um, good um, like um, text based like digital text of that. Because I, I tried, I, I looked, I, I wrote it one time on Minds and. For some reason, it got deleted during one of the early like updates. But anyways, so I, I realized, hey, you're you're not pulling the right quote. Like you're giving me fake quotes. And so like I'm, so I get like kind of like I, I was like ah oh, whatever. Uh, and this this is like I guess people commonly refer to this as uh, like it hallucinates, which is which I don't like. But uh, anyways, like now I, I understand more of like how it works. So then. I the next time I go back to it, like I want it. I actually had this dream about a blue lotus, and I asked it about the blue lotus, and I asked it about this, and I asked it about that, and then um, I kind of go into some Mayan stuff, and then I wanted to ask it about, um, you know, I kind of like I, I should have looked up how to properly pronounce it because I'm gonna mess it up. But how I refer to it in my own head is a Kulkin, and um, anyways. I wanted to ask it about that, and there's really not that great information on 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 the Mayan god of poetry, um, the version that I, that I'm looking up. Anyways, uh, it gives me a pretty, it gives me some stuff, and then I go and I look up, and then so I kind of like start asking about Mayan stuff. Mm-hmm. And at this time, I'm like, in my own head, I'm like, damn, I'm I'm actually of the people of the sun. <laughs> I should fucking know this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then so so I was just like uh you know this kind of like fear and loathing every now and then I, I have especially that was like the the beauty at, uh, that I, why I like the last lost code the last Aztec codex it's like oh you know I feel like um some kinship to it some like you know like oh I I, I long for like I wish like I had a story that like could have helped me when I was in high school because you know like. The, the the after like oh that was cool that it happened then later is like is my brain working right like I like I like there's no there's no uh, reference that like helps you like even even in um, college I didn't like what was like the common psychological like interpretation of dreams I'm like yeah most of that makes sense but but there's also this part and then there's there's no textbook like oh it's a black hole like whoa. <laughs> And I think it was the pursuit of beauty that served me best. Beauty is beauty, and that's all there is to it. If you're interested in yourself, then you're stuck with yourself, and you're stuck with your death. But if you get interested in beauty, then you launch out something mysterious inside your soul that grows and grows like a secret of same thought until you're it. Well, traditionally, meaning since the invention of print, 
the artist has had this role where the eccentricity and the bohemian lifestyle and so forth of the artist was tolerated because the argument was the artist is a kind of antenna for this mysterious thing called the future and the artist would sound the alarm and bring the news. Beauty is beauty, that's all there is to it. If you're interested in yourself, then you're stuck with yourself and you're stuck with your death. But if you get interested in beauty, then you launch off something mysterious inside your soul that grows and grows like a secret of same thought until you're it. And I've always been interested in beauty. And I've always been interested in beauty. It's a shuddering situation. It's hard to let go of your selfhood and have a good time with beauty. Isn't there yet another way to get a handle on this? And the answer is yes, but I'm not sure it's easier. It may seem at first easier, but that is aesthetic. The imagination must serve the ideal of the beauty. The imagination must serve the ideal of the beauty. Beauty is beauty, that's all there is to it. If you're interested in yourself, then you're stuck with yourself and you're stuck with your death. But if you get interested in beauty, then you launch on something mysterious inside your soul that grows and grows like a secret of the same thought until you're it. That which is taste is to be avoided at all costs. And 90% of the difficulty in your intellectual life would never have happened if you had just had better taste. We're brought up to scheme and to battle to make it in the here and now with gold, lovers, power, clothes, and a face from anyone from our mother to the next door neighbor cop can see and respect. But it is entirely possible that we can make everyone a king and we will still have bully and uh, slave. And the addressing of the economic disparity doesn't change the structure of the human soul, then we will have to go deeper. And I don't know how this is going to look. There's a lot of tension in any community that discusses this kind of stuff over what, where the body lies in all of this. Can we solve our problems and maintain our individual existences?